Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. And I'm Wendy Yee. Today we're taking a look at a game called Series. Uh, In space. Yeah, so it's a worker placement game, it says, set on the dwarf planet Series. And it's, you know, that's all I knew about it. <laughs> Is that a real planet? Um, Is there a real dwarf planet in our galaxy called yes, Series? Yes, I'm going to say, because now I'm going to be corrected in the... Uh, <laughs> in uh, the comments. But in this game, we are miners. And you are going up there trying to mine and get points by basically building your mining colony. It's definitely a euro style game, which is why it Wendy is. is here. Uh, a worker placement game, but with some twist to it, let me show you. There's a lot going on here on the board, but it's not as complex as you might think. Let's take a closer look at player boards here. So players are going to have some outstations that they start with. You can all start with the same, or there's a different side, or everyone has slightly different ones. You're going to keep track of your resources here. You got some, so you got energy, you have ice, you have advanced ceramics, and you have ore. And then for some reason, alloys, you get them and just put them here in your storage thing, as well as money that you're going to get over the course of the game. You even have another sort of influence here at the AMAC Council, where you'll be putting influence markers there, and that's kind of another resource that you have to spend. In the main phase of a round, players are essentially going to have two actions, or you can pass, but once you pass, you're done. But you can place a leader token, and so players will have a certain number of leader tokens that they're going to place on various spots on the board that are open, and you can place one of them. The other option they have is they can activate an outstation by assigning a worker. And so you'll take one of the available workers, and there's a certain number of workers of each color available based on the number of players in the game, but each round, more workers are coming on this ship, and those are kind of random. There's one of each color, but it might not be that way. So it's up to you to decide what you're going to do. I could place another worker here and take the actions here, or I could take one of these off, but once the blue workers are gone, I can no longer pull them, but these spots might fill up before I have a, a space to put mine. We'll talk about a few spaces on the board. Up here at the top, you can see that when you go to this spot, you can, one of the, if you send one of your leaders out here, you can take two of these actions, and this will change. There's a board here that will change. Basically, you're trading one resource for another, or you can build one of these here. And these cards are just points. That's basically all they are. And they cost a good amount of resources. You can also take one and build it later, but you'll lose half the points it's worth if you don't build it by the end of the game. In the construction yard, you have a chance to build new facilities and add them to your outstations. You can build it for the first time, or you can even put two together so that it makes the ability that you have when you go there better. And so these also have costs on them. It's almost always ceramics and the alloys that you'll be spending to get these going. And you can, so this is the main spot you're going to, to do this. You can also go to the Contractors Association up here, and this lets you take some of the other actions you just have to pay money for that. And over here, the AMAC Council, going to this spot, is gonna let you spend your influence to do various actions. Now, one of the actions that you can do, and I should mention, you have these four outstations here. This is where you would place a worker to activate this, and it shows you what you activate on the card itself. And as you build more of these in front of you, you have more spots to put cards and get kind of cool things that you can do. And all these symbols mean various things, but there's a couple I want to point out. One, which is a big point of this game, is launching your different rockets that you're going to send out. You're going to try to uh, activate these asteroid belts. And as you go out here, this board itself, each round, the outside's gonna rotate once, the inside's gonna rotate again, and then this middle one will rotate once also. So the middle one's spinning faster. But you're launching, and you're launching from these spots, and you can land on these different things, which will give you victory points, but every time you cross a dotted line, or a white line, or this line in the middle, you have to pay ice. Ice is kind of your currency to fly around out there, so the more ice you have, you can land on this plant, which gives you 15, or this one gives you four, but it's also gonna produce a ceramic for you when you do it, and at the beginning of each turn. And that's an important thing. All your stations here, your outland stations, produce for you at the beginning of the turn, including the new ones you build, but the asteroids you land on can also produce you stuff, or they can simply give you points. Other things let you increase your technology. You'll be moving cubes on here. This is what energy is the main use for. 
This is going to give you points, but and also there's going to be a point token here that whoever is the first one to get there will get the bonus three points that's there. But they give you benefits, and this one when you launch your rockets, if you get to level two here, it's you pay less ice to cross the lines. You can even launch two rockets when you get to the end. The middle ones when you construct these cards at the bottom. And then the bottom one here is going to let you do more things, just various things with research and other things like that. So all this stuff comes together, but you're trying to get points. There's only three main rounds in the game. But remember, you are placing out all your leader workers, and you're going to use these as much as you can until you're forced to pass. You're trying to build more of your these miners to send out to the astrophil. You have to launch them. You want to build these cards. You want to build those cards. You want to go over here and mess around with politics, maybe even get one of these tokens, which will give you a benefit for the rest of that round. And all these different ways will give you points. After three rounds, whoever has the most points is the winner. Okay, so the thing for me that makes this game so fascinating is the worker placement part of it. Yeah. Because when you first play the game, you kind of think, Okay, well, these guys, that, these, these color workers, I don't want to use them too quickly because there's one per player, you know, so I have, we all start with one of each of those buildings. Then someone buys one of those buildings and instantly you think, okay, now they have two red buildings, so they need two of those red workers. Right. And there might be enough, there's often enough to go around, but there's not always. I think that solves the problem that a lot of people have with these type of like worker placement Euro games, some people feel like, oh, you took my spot isn't real interaction. But in this one, oh, you took my spot or you took my worker. So there's a little bit more to balance out in that regard. There is. There's five spots at each area to place your leaders. And then there's enough. If you get blocked out, it's more end of round type of thing. Right, right. But it does still do the tension. I'm sitting there thinking, do I want to go to this spot first or that? Because there's not just... I guess mechanically it's all the same. If I put a worker there or if I take a worker here and put it here, I have all those action spots. But it right. feels different, and I think that's kind of the crux of the game. What's interesting, too, is the worker placement spots in this game have alternate ways to get there. You just usually have to spend some of your influence cubes or you have to spend a different type of worker. Yes. And so there's a lot of different routes to get to do the same thing you're trying to do. But people can block you on all those routes, or maybe it's at the end of the round and you're running out of influence. You're like, what do I spend it on? Like, I just have a little bit more that I can squeak out. And I think that that makes those influence tokens very thematic. You only have so much influence that'll go yes. politically or whatever as you're trying to squeeze out a little bit extra. To that end, though, I do not think the symbology in this game is great. Yeah. It does differentiate. It does, it's all the same color, which doesn't help, right? There's just a bunch of white symbols. But there's a couple that look like things are getting built. I'm like, well, what? I, I mean, I'm still, when I look at it, I'm like, what's that symbol? Do? I mean, if it shows the rocket ship going off, I know that means send, sending something to a planet. <laughs> right. But I just wish they were a little easier to differentiate because they're not all in the same spot either. Now, you can look around the board and say, this symbol does this. Here's that section. Okay, I got it. And I don't think it's like horrific. I just found it to be a little confusing. I also found it, like I said in the overview, it's a little weird that the alloy and the money are not on the track. Now, yeah. maybe money because you can get more than 12 yeah. money, but you're never going to get more than three alloy. But it feels fancy. Yeah, maybe that's I why. I don't know. The components for this game are fine. I think the board is very good quality. The puzzle board with the spinning thing on it. The pictures are okay. I kind of My eyes kind of glazed over them. They look generic spacey. It looks like terraforming I, Mars spacey, if that makes yeah. sense. Um, I think for me, the board, um, the I think one of the big changes I would like is I would like the action spaces to be more obvious. It's a gray board with grayish black backgrounds. And you know, I mean, everything is very gray. And so when the worker placement spaces are just a different shade of gray, yeah. they, they're, they're a specific shape, but they just don't speak. To, they don't like stick out and go, oh, this, is, this section is a spot. This section is a spot. I have trouble seeing that and I know at the beginning that was a lot to take in. Yeah, the game looks fairly complex. I would not consider it to be complex because everything you do is straightforward. I'm okay. getting resources. I'm using those resources to build a rocket. I launched a rocket or I build this to get this spot. 
to put a worker on, I put the worker on it. But there's still some things that, you know, when you build this, sometimes you get the income on it right away, mm. or you need to put a worker on it to get that. But when you put a worker on, you get the, the bottom part of the card, not the top. There's some things like that. I do want to talk about the mining. I think the mining is really fun. I think it's super fun. Yeah, you send those rocket ships up, crossing lines and everything. But the rotating feels like it's just put in there just to be in the game. I mean, it needs to rotate so that there's new rotate. asteroids, but all three boards rotate at different speeds. I think it's almost in there just to make you smile because you're like, oh, I get to spin this one faster. It doesn't really matter that much. It makes it a little hard to predict. Like You have to think a little farther, but I agree. I think it could have all just spun one and we would have been fine. Yeah, uh, because... Yeah, just because once you get into that middle, it's crossing from middle ring, the big rings to the other. That costs the most ice. And you're paying one more to cross those middle dotted lines. So it doesn't matter that much anyway. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like pennies. What I what I liked about the asteroid board is that there were the different costs so that you really had to decide, am I going to save up a lot to do a really big turn or am I going to stick with those little outside edges because those become income. And there's so many things in this game that switch from, oh, I'm, I might get a little bit of stuff now, but I'll get income for the next two rounds because there's only, what, three rounds in the game? Yeah, there's not a lot of rounds yeah. and you only get so much income. But it matters. Like, it does make a difference getting that income. And so there's that choice of like, do I want to save up a lot for something big or do I want to take something little now that will give me a little bit over time? I also think that the, the flow of resources works pretty well. At the beginning, you're like, I don't have very much, mm -hmm. but you can easily get it. You can easily get some stuff. You can go start mining asteroids. You can build things. And it kind of, and by turn three, you're like, I have a ton of resources, but you'll be missing one of them. It feels like you're like, oh, I was doing well, but I needed ice. I you feel know, like everything was always allotted for, for me. Like I knew in future turns, I was like, I may look like I have a lot, but I have exactly what I need for everything. Yeah, but it, I mean, it doesn't, it's not, I don't think the game is super tight. Knowing which, where to go in the research tracks, knowing what other people do matters too. Because mm -hmm. if one person's mining and they're the only person mining, I think they'll win. Probably. Or if you've got one person going for expanding their board and everybody else yes. is fighting over mining. Yeah, I think that you have to balance things out. Um and with that, you can't, this is not one of those games that you can just kind of fly by the seat of your pants. You can a little bit, but I, you have to plan. Like the stuff that you build, like the cards, it takes a couple steps to get anywhere. It's not like, yes. oh, I just put a worker on a board and I built this thing. It, it takes steps to make sure you get the resources. Sometimes because there's so many multiple resources, you're like, okay, well, I have three out of the four resources I need, like you said, and I'm missing this one. I just need this one thing. And so you... You can't just be like, hey, I'm getting points. There's very specifically adding to your board and then going to that meteorite space. Like those are getting you points and they take work. And I guess the project cards. Some yeah. Of the project cards. It is. A, those are also points. There's not necessarily an ebb and flow to the game other than you're getting more resources each round. So that's kind of it. The cards come out whenever. Mm -hmm. um, but I like it a lot. I'm, I'm giving this one an eight. I, I'm knocking it a point because it is symbols. And I should mention... It's not even the symbols as much. It's the um, the favors. We had to print player aids out for those favors because there's so many rules on what a favor does. The symbols on the favors aren't great. And, I mean, that's a big deal. Uh, we printed those out because I know everyone's going to ask that the entire game, what those favors do. Mm -hmm. I wish that was a little better. But other than that, this feels a little different than a lot of worker placement games. It also has a nice flow to it. I was interested. The whole game, most turns are pretty quick. And even when someone else is going, there's not a lot of compounding turns. Mm -hmm. I'm just doing something very short. Then it's your turn to do something short. But there's a stress, not huge amounts of stress, but a little bit of stress where I'm going, well, don't go there. Or I need to put two workers there. So I'm going to put, should I do this first? And I'm trying to think my turns out. Like Wendy said, a ton of planning in this game for me in my head. Mm -hmm. And I enjoyed it. I gave this an 8.5. Yes, those symbols are annoying, but they're four tokens. And I feel like after I played this twice, maybe... maybe once even like I feel like I had them by the end of the game I knew what they all did okay so um that's not gonna knock it off that extra half point for me so I'm giving this uh, a seal of excellence I really enjoyed that idea of having two different types of workers lots of different types of resources I feel like there are so many options of directions to go and ways to 
interact subtly. You know, I don't like the super aggressive games, but I right. feel like there's a good level of interaction for this for me. And the actions themselves are enjoyable. Hey, I'm going ahead and I'm going to build whatever that launchy ship thing is. I think that I just call them miners. But... Miners? I don't know. Probes? Who knows? So I'm going to build that. I'm going to launch it. I'm going to get to space. I'm going to get this awesome thing. Or hey, I'm going to save a bunch of resources and I'm going to build this building so I can put more workers on it so I can steal them from Tom because he didn't build enough red buildings and I'm going to steal his one red worker that he was hoping to get. Like I think that there's good stuff going on and I enjoy when there's multiple ways to get victory points. But it's kind of mappable too. If yeah. I see Wendy buy a red thing, I can go, okay, now I need to recount. Should I take the red right. worker now or not? It's not a surprise. Yeah, the, you, you can't do, because you only can do one thing per turn, I can always go, well, I'm going to have to pivot here, but I don't like taking this action first, but I need to do that. Yeah. And then like Wendy said, there's a spot where you can take other actions, you know, as long as you have the influence or, what, or money to do them. So yeah, I agree with you said that this has some uniqueness to it, so it feels a little bit different than just your basic worker placement game. It doesn't look different. That's my concern. <laughs> I, I mean, we didn't play this for the longest time in the studios because it looks just kind of like... It was even on my, like, I want to play this year list. Like, it was on my top 10 of the year coming out with anticipated games. Oh, was it and really? it still took me a while to get to it. Yeah, because this looks so generic. <laughs> and also, the theme really is generic. We're mining asteroids. But... It's a cool game. So there you go. That's series. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Wendy Yee. We'll see you next time.